complete a blue speaker card and give it to the officer in the back of the room. Items that are not on the agenda are heard at the end of the voting meeting. Glendale has seven city council members. Mayor Jerry Wires, Vice Mayor Joyce Clark of the Yucca District, Council Member Jamie Aldama of the Ocotillo District, Council Member Ian Hugh of the Cactus District, Council Member Bart Turner of the Barrel District, Council Member Ray Mauner of the Saguaro District, and Council Member Lauren Tolmachoff of the Choya District. This meeting is streaming live on Glendale's Facebook and YouTube pages and the city's cable television station, Glendale Channel 11. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, good evening to the City of Glendale Council meeting of March 26, 2024. This meeting is called to order. I'm not going to do an attendance roll call because everybody's here. So if you take note of that, I would appreciate it. Uh, with that, the next two items on our agenda are the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation is going to be delivered by Pam Prin. I probably messed it up. Prine? There we go. Pam Prine. Uh, she's a Community Relations Director, Phoenix Metro Area Church of Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, gentlemen, if it's appropriate, would you please remove your hats? Would everyone please stand and then remain standing after the invocation for our Pledge of Allegiance? Pam? Our Father in Heaven, we are indeed grateful to come before thee this evening as a Glendale City Council meeting. We're thankful for the residents, the business owners, those who are here to make progress that thy spirit will be with us. We are grateful for Glendale and the growth and prosperity and the wonderful place it is for our families and schools. And please continue to bless these people who serve and sacrifice of their time in behalf of the leadership of this city. And we're bless their families while they are away from them. We are grateful, Heavenly Father, for all the upcoming opportunities that will be here for this city. And we pray that as we lead and guide and participate, that we will be peacemakers and make progress. We are thankful for the great citizens that we have here and pray that thou will continue to bless this city as we grow and develop. And, and uh, please have a hand in the good things that happen. We pray that thou will bless the leaders again of this city, of our great state, and those of our nation. We acknowledge thy hand in the good that we have and um, be with this meeting as we know that challenges bring opportunities. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our country. I pledge allegiance to the United States, United States, States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. <coughs> okay, next on the agenda is the consideration of the minutes from the February 27, 2024 voting meeting. Council members, do you have any corrections or additions to those minutes? Seeing none, can I get a motion to approve the February 27, 2024 meeting minutes? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I move we approve the minutes of the February 27, 2024 voting meeting. Second. second. I have a motion from the vice mayor, a second from council member clerk uh, to approve. Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Here's the ayes have it. Do have it. That motion carries. Next on the agenda is a consideration of minutes from the March 5, 2024 special voting meeting. Council members, do you have any corrections or additions to those minutes? Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve the March 5, 2024 meeting minutes yes mayor i move the approval of the minutes of the march 5 2024 special voting meeting second i have a motion from the vice mayor a second from council member tomachoff uh any discussion hearing none all in favor please signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed say nay here's guys have it do have it that also carries proclamations and awards the proclamation uh april 24 as water awareness month in the city of glendale <clears throat> That's a request uh, for the City Council to proclaim April 24 as Water Awareness Month in the City of Glendale. And the proclamation will be accepted by representatives from Honeywell International, the Marshall Ranch HOA Association, and West Glen Estates HOA. 
Uh, so I'll come up and uh, we'll read that proclamation. And then if I can get all you folks to come up uh, near the podium, that'd be awesome. <clears throat> Sorry about that. It's been a busy day today. Uh, we have a proclamation that we will give you, just not going to give it to you now. So c come on over here, and then who is going to accept it? Nobody? I will. You're going to accept it. Okay, so uh, all I can tell you is on behalf of the city council, uh, my office, the city, we do have a proclamation. Yeah. Well, lucky there. Okay, we're getting there, folks. Okay, so folks, come on, gather up close. Okay, so I'll read this, and then we'll let you go ahead and speak. How's that? Uh, whereas water is one of Arizona's most precious natural resources and is vital to economic vitality and well-being of our communities, and, and I would argue water is the most precious. Whereas the Glendale Water Service Department is committed to providing a safe, reliable, high-quality water supply for our current and future customers, and whereas Glendale Water Services Department offers a comprehensive water conservation program to help our residents, businesses, and schools conserve water. And whereas every resident, business, and school can make a difference, especially during the times of drought by finding and repairing leaks, installing water efficient devices, creating desert friendly landscapes, and adopting water wise practices. And whereas proclaiming April as Water Awareness Month benefits the city and community by educating and empowering all citizens to be good stewards of Arizona's water resource. Now, therefore, I, Jerry P. Wires, Mayor of the City of Glendale, Arizona, on behalf of the City Council, do hereby proclaim April 2024 as Water Awareness Month and encourage all citizens to learn more about their local water resources and make water conservation a daily habit. Uh, that was signed by myself and our Chief Clerk. Uh, Ms. Bauer, we will get you a copy of this fully signed. Uh, for the city staff, thank you for everything that you folks do. As far as the HOAs, uh, you guys got your hands full. You do. But but thank you so much for what you do. I'm going to let you go ahead and talk a little thank bit, okay? Man. All right. So hello, everyone. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for proclaiming April as Water Awareness Month. My name is Ann Staley, and I'm a water conservation specialist with the City of Glendale's Water Services Department within the Conservation and Sustainable Living Division. I enjoy the important work that we do to help the public conserve water, especially since we live in the Sonoran Desert. The Water Services Department was awarded a two-year $50,000 Water Smart Grant from the United States Bureau of Reclamation to promote water efficient landscapes located in an increasingly dry and hot climate. A special thank you to the city's parks and transportation departments for leading by example and utilizing our grant to upgrade irrigation technology at a few of their sites. On behalf of our department and the city, I would also like to thank the Glendo Water Efficiency Partners that are standing behind me for their commitment to conserve water. Marshall Ranch HOA, West Glen Estates HOA, and Honeywell International. These partners and several other HOAs upgraded conventional irrigation controllers that are manually scheduled with water sense labeled smart irrigation controllers that use real time data to automatically adjust irrigation needs. And it's important to note that a properly installed water, water sense labeled irrigation controller can reduce irrigation water use among larger landscapes by 15 to 30%. The new controllers show in real time how much water is actually being used outdoors, and they also have the added ability to detect leaks and stop them immediately so that they can be labeled for repair. Managing large landscapes is a large expense. And considering upgrades such as these projects take a fair amount of time to accomplish because they require the necessary approvals to do, but they are well worth the investment. They're a great example of working together to protect our shared water resources. We thank you, partners, 
for continuing to reach out to our department to help you conserve water. And we sincerely appreciate the mayor and council and you all for the support of our water conservation programs. Thank you. So let's do a picture and then we'll do the certificate. We'll get that to you later, okay? okay. So scoot over that way just a little bit. We'll just get it, we'll just get it all tight right here. Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. Consent agenda items four through 21. Uh, consent agenda items are a routine nature. They've been previously studied by the city council at a workshop session. They are intended to be acted upon in one motion by this council. Uh, do we have any speaker cards for any of the consent agenda items? No, Mayor. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve consent agenda items four through 21? Go ahead. Yeah, I motion to approve items four through 21 on the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Eldama, second Council Member Tomanshoff to approve the consent agenda items 4 through 21. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Here you guys have it, do have it, that motion carries. Ms. Bauer, would you read consent resolution items 22 through 31 by number and title, please? Item 22, resolution number R24-12, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, directing the entering into of an intergovernmental agreement with Maricopa County Public Health Department for Heat Relief Respite Centers. Item 23, resolution number R24-14, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, authorizing and directing the entering into of a subrecipient agreement with Maricopa County Department of Emergency Management and authorizing the acceptance and expenditure of the securing the city's grant award in the approximate amount of $37,952 for the Glendale Police and Fire Departments for personnel expenses related to certain training drills and exercises. Item 24, resolu resolution number R24-15, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, authorizing and directing the entering into of a memorandum of understanding between Maricopa County, Arizona, and the City of Glendale, Arizona. Item 25, resolution number R24-16, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, designating the city's emergency manager as authorized representative and authorizing the re representative to execute applications with the Arizona Department of Emergency and Military Affairs, Division of Emergency Management, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency for the purpose of obtaining financial assistance under the Disaster Relief Act. Item 26, resolution number R24-17, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, setting forth library usage fees and establishing an effective date. Item 27, resolution number R24-18, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, authorizing, an ex authorizing acceptance and directing the entering into of a grant in aid award of $40,000 from the Tahana Autumn Nation for the New Life Community Church. Item 28, resolution number R24-19, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, authorizing the city manager to enter into a license agreement with Rainbow Investments for use of city-owned real property to support downtown restaurant operations adjacent to 6729 North 57th Drive, Glendale Avenue, 85301. Item 29, resolution number R24-20, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, authorizing the entering into of an agreement with Bricer LLC for a fire protection system inspection test and maintenance database and fee collection for the city of Glendale. Item 30, resolution number R24-21, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, authorizing the acceptance and expenditure of the Child and Family Advocacy Center Fund grant, project number AG24-0005-003, 
in the approximate amount of $70,515.25 from the Office of the Arizona Attorney General. Item 31, resolution number R24-22, a resolution of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, authorizing and directing the city manager to execute and file a modification of designation of assured water <coughs> supply application with the Arizona Department of Water Resources. That concludes the consent resolutions. Thank you. Any speaker cards? No, sir. Is there a motion to approve items 22 through 31 on the consent resolutions agenda? I move we adopt uh, consent resolutions 22 through 31 and waive reading beyond the title. Second. second. I motion from Councilmember Turner, second from the Vice Mayor. To approve items 22 through 31, <coughs> excuse me, on the consent resolutions agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Here, you guys have it, do have it. That motion carries. Moving on to bids and contracts. Ms. Barr, would you introduce item 32, please? Award of RFP 24-11 and authorization to enter into an agreement with Questica Limited for purchase of a budget and planning software solution. There are no speaker cards. Thank you. Council members, any questions? Can I get a motion to approve item 32? Yes, Mayor, I move we award RFP 24-11. Sure it out. is on. Oh, move, I move it closer we, to your mouth then. Oh, that's right, next to my mouth. I remove we award RFP 2411 to Questica Limited. Second. <coughs> okay, I have a motion. Councilmember Tomachoff, a second. <coughs> Councilmember Eldama to approve the recommended action. Is there any discussion on a motion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Councilmember Eldama, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Clark, how do you vote? Mayor, I will explain my vote. Go ahead. Uh, this item and the two following items under bids and contracts are five-year contracts. They provide no continuity of oversight for council when council member terms are only four years. And with that, I vote nay. Councilmember Melner, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Tomachop, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Turner, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Mayor, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye. That motion does carry. Ms. Bauer, can you introduce item 33? Authorization to enter into a construction agreement with APCO Sign Group, Inc., for the citywide sign replacement project. There are no speaker cards. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Just trying to read this and make sure we didn't pass this already. Okay, that was item 33, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, will you have a motion? <clears throat> no. Anybody like to make a motion? Yes, I move we enter into the construction agreement with ABCO Sign Group, Inc. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion. Councilmember Tomachoff, a second from Councilmember Turner. You. So let me. You? Yeah. Councilmember Hugh. To approve the recommended action, is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll conduct a roll call vote. Councilmember Eldama, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Clark, how do you vote? Nay. Councilmember Milner, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Tomachoff, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Turner, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Mayor, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye. That motion also carries. Ms. Barr, would you introduce item 3-4? Authorization to enter into a services agreement with Perennial Energy LLC for the landfill flare system preventative maintenance parts and services. There are no speaker cards. Thank you. Can I get a motion to approve item 34? Mayor. Go ahead. I move that we uh, authorize the, the city manager to enter a service agreement with Perennial Energy LLC. Second. I have a motion from uh, Councilmember Milner, a second from the Vice Mayor to approve the recommended action. Any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Councilmember Oldama, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Clark, how do you vote? Nay. Councilmember Milner, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Tomachoff, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Turner, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Mayor, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye. That motion also carries. Land development actions. Uh, we'll now move on to that. Ms. Barr, would you introduce item 3-5, please? Puda Property Annexation, AN 260, annexation of 2.9 acres located at the southwest corner of Northern Avenue and Alsop Avenue, public hearing. Mayor, members of the council, here to provide staff report this evening is Assistant Director of Development Services, Tabitha Perry. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. This annexation is for the blank petition, so it does not require an action by the council, but rather an opportunity for citizens to um, provide any feedback and comments in the public hearing process. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and bring us into public hearing and we'll let you do your thing. 
public hearing is now open on item number 35. Go ahead. The subject property is approximately three acres in size and is located at the southwest corner of Northern and Alsup Avenues. The property is currently in the county with a rural um, zoning district and upon annexation, the city would apply the most light compatible zoning, which would also be a rural zoning classification. The applicant is proposing a general plan <coughs> amendment as well as a rezoning application to general commercial to allow for commercial future commercial land uses. The applicant does not have a um, tenant user at this time. The subject property is approximately 13 miles from City Hall. Here's the annexation map where you can see the proposed subject site does touch the city boundaries. Here's an aerial map and as you can see to the east and then to the south is single family residential. So the future proposal, if the annexation is approved for commercial land uses would support, support the single family residential in the area. And with that, Mayor and Council, that concludes the presentation. Okay, why don't you stand by? I do have a, a person here that would like to speak. Uh, Kathy Brink Jordan, I hope I pronounced that right. If you'll come up, uh, if you would uh, state your name for the record. Uh, if you live in Glendale, the district you live in, if you don't live in Glendale, just tell us the city you live in. And then um, you'll have three minutes, ma'am. Okay, uh, my name's Kathy Brink Jordan. And I have business on Alsup and Northern, right where the annex is gonna be. And um, I'm inquiring about what is gonna be there on that corner, the southwest corner. And okay. that's Litchfield Park. And then you're... Okay, we're, we're, we, we can't um, go back and forth as far as conversation. Tell us what you're looking for. Staff's listening and they can talk with you later. What I'm looking for is what kind of entity is going in that place that you want to annex. No? Okay, ma'am, we can't, we can't go back and forth as far as okay. the discussion. If you'll right, tell thanks. us everything that you're interested or want to know, right. our staff is listening right now, and, and they'll respond afterwards. Okay. Okay? And then pull the microphone down a little bit so everybody can hear you. There you go. And I wanted to inquire or make a statement sure. about um, all the businesses on the road that we already have now that are um, locally owned ownership by private people like me and myself that uh, we have so much traffic coming down here because of all the big uh, warehouses are going in on our road and I just want to know if we are going to be annexed in any time soon to Glendale on the Alsup Road. Mayor. Uh, again, we, we can't. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, Mayor, okay. point of order. Right. This is a public hearing. Aren't we allowed to speak to the speaker? Can we ask Mr. Gruber? I, 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 need, I need her to tell us what she's looking for for three minutes, and then we can go from there. But right now, it's not, we're not going to I'd like to ask her a question, though. I'm asking if we're oh. allowed to ask her questions. Uh, Mayor and members of the council, Council Member I, I think at the end of her... Um, for three minutes or a lot of time, I think it would be appropriate to ask a question at that time. We're allowed to ask her a question, though. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So if, do you have anything else that you would need to know so we can kind of figure out what we're going to do next? No. That's okay. what I want to state. <laughs> okay. So uh, when you first began, you said your name, but did you say where you live? Litchfield Park, Arizona. Okay. okay very good. Okay. So with that, you had your hand up first. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Question of staff. Has the applicant indicated any proposed uses for the property they'd like to annex? Um, Mayor, council members, at this time, they do not have any um, identified end users. They're, um, they're trying to get the annexation and the entitlements in place prior to um, marketing the site for any potential end users. Um, Mayor Tabitha, thank you. The Staff report mentions integrated or freestanding commercial uses and services that serve at both the neighborhood and community levels 
as well as may attract regional shoppers. So it's anticipated that this would be retail shopping as opposed to manu you know, manufacturing or any of the other types of uses we put in out there. Um, Mayor, council members, um, the staff report is just referencing the type of commercial land uses. Um, as indicated, it could be a commercial retail, it could be a freestanding restaurant, it could be a fast food restaurant, it could be a professional office. Um, it's just based on the UDC, what the permitted land uses would allow for the C2 zoning district. Mayor, thank you, Tabitha. Yeah. Mayor. Uh, hold on. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so, Miss, I'd like to ask, so where, uh, I just want to understand, where is your business? My business is like, where, uh, uh, pull the microphone. About, maybe not even a half a mile south of that. On Alsip, on Alsip, okay, and can I, so, okay, so the, there are is already commercial businesses along Alsop Avenue? No, well, one just went in a big, huge warehouse, just went in on Glendale and Alsop Road, or Avenue, but, um, like, I own a business, people across the street own their business, we've got four locally owned people that own businesses there, and we want to know what's going to affect us. Okay. And so are they, um, thank you, Ms. Perry, are they within the, would they be within the notification zone for the zoning case? Um, Mayor, council member, they will be within a notification area. Um, the notification is a minimum of a 600 foot radius. So my understanding of where her property is located, it will be in that notification area. Okay. So, um, and I, I guess it's probably best coming from you. We, would you, just for the sake of the audience, explain that process that we will send out notifications about the zoning case and there'll be opportunities for public hearings then so she understands how it works. Uh, Mayor, council members, just for cl um, clarification, the applicant has already gone through the citizen participation process for the annexation, the general plan, and the rezoning. Um, they're um, tentatively will be scheduled to go before a planning commission for the general plan and the rezoning aspect for a recommendation to come before city council maybe sometime in May. Um, the applicant is here. Um, the applicant or staff myself or the project manager can speak with her to just give more clarification to any questions that she may have. Um, so there is still an opportunity for her to express any concerns that she may have. Okay, so has it been scheduled, Mayor, if I could? Has it been scheduled for the Planning Commission already, or? Mayor, council members, um, we're in the process of our internal process to complete staff reports for the, um, I believe it's April 25th of next okay. month. Okay, at the neighborhood meeting, um, were they able to sign up for you know interested parties so that they could be notified because you would, they will be a public hearing at the planning commissions, just so that they have the opportunity to appear if they if if they know are able to be notified about it. Yes, um, Mayor, Council members, the um, the agenda item will be put on the in the newspaper, and then we also will send out the postcards advising the residents of the pending public hearing. Okay, perfect. So I just thank you, Mayor, for letting me do that because I mean, ordinary citizens don't understand how the process works. And I didn't want her to think this is her only opportunity to speak. So there will be a public hearing at the Planning Commission before the zoning case is approved by the Planning Commission. And they'll make a recommendation to the council. And then when it comes to us, there'll be another opportunity for you and the neighbors and for the other businesses to p appear at that public hearing as well. So I just wanted to make sure that you didn't think this was it for you. Okay? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mayor, for letting me do that. Yeah, no problem. Uh, if there's no other, qu oh, there is one other question, uh, ma'am. Before you before you take off, uh, the developer I understand is in the audience somewhere. Uh, maybe you can get with him before you and he both leave today, and he might be able to answer some of your questions uh, directly. Uh, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. I have a question for Miss Perry, please. I don't know if, if staff can bring up the annexation map. I do have a curious question. If the map comes up. Uh, there's a parcel property to the east of the annexation area. Um, are we creating a county island by 
annexing this particular property just to the east, south of, of Northern, is that parcel. And I wondered if, if now we're creating a county island because I don't think legally we can do that. See the, looks like it's, there's about five parcels to the east. Um, Mayor, council members, as you can see, the subject property does touch our MPA area and it's within the city boundaries. So we will not be creating an Allen and it's within our annexation policy for us to have the ability to annex the property because it's within our boundaries. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and then I've got one, one final question for you. Uh, is the city out trying to annex property or are people coming to us asking to be annexed? Um, Mayor, council members, for the most part, property owners are coming to the city requesting to be annexed into the city. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. You good? All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, anyone else needing to speak on this item? No? You good? Public hearing is now closed. Uh, now moving on to ordinances. Item 36. Ordinance number 024-06, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, <coughs> amending Glendale City Code Chapter 20 and setting forth an effective date. Mayor, members of the Council, here to provide staff report this evening is our Director of Community Services, Jean Marino. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, this item before you tonight is to amend uh, the city code related to library operations. That's located in um, Chapter 20 of our Glendale City Code. Um, this item has been studied by Council at works, uh, workshop session in February. Um, this change will align language to be similar to other city codes, removes unnecessary or obsolete language that has changed over time, um, it refreshes library advisory board responsibilities to reflect our contemporary operations, um, and I, do I would like to point out that the ordinance still states that library usage fees shall be defined and established by council resolution. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Mayor. Questions, go ahead. Could you explain what the ordinance does with regard to fines? Uh, Mayor and council member um, Clark, the, the <coughs> fines themselves are actually adopted by resolution. So there was an item on the consent resolution earlier today um, that the council has approved, and that eliminates fines for overdue items for all of our library patrons, which is a significant, um, was perceived as a significant barrier to services. And so I thank you for taking that action tonight and supporting um, our library patrons and, and giving us the opportunity to welcome patrons back to our libraries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. All right. No other questions? Can I get a motion on item 36, ordinance 024-06? Yes, Mayor. I move we pass and adopt ordinance number 024-06. Second. second. I have a motion by Councilmember Clark, a second from Councilmember Hugh to approve the recommended action. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Councilmember Roldam, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Clark, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Melner, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Tomachoff, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Turner, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Mayor, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye. That motion carries unanimous. Ms. Bauer, would you introduce item 37, please? Ordinance 024-07. Ordinance number 024-07, an ordinance of the Council of the City of Glendale, Maricopa County, Arizona, authorizing the execution of deeds and dedication at various locations throughout the city and directing the city clerk to record a certified copy of the ordinance. Mayor, members of the council, who provides staff report is Glendale Principal Engineer Jamie Chapin. Thank you, Mr. Phelps. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is a request to accept right-of-way at three locations so that the city may operate and maintain the associated roadway improvements in the future. Thank you. Questions? No questions? Is that all you got? Mayor, that's all I have. You made that easy tonight. Okay, can I get a motion? <laughs> Mayor. Go ahead. I move that we approve ordinance number 024-07. Second. I have a motion Councilmember Melner, a second from Councilmember Clark to approve the recommended action. Any discussion on this motion? 
Hearing none, roll call vote. Councilmember Oldham, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Clark, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Melder, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Tomachoff, how do you vote? Aye. Councilmember Turner, how do you vote? Aye. Vice Mayor, how do you vote? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries unanimous. Council items, I'm sorry, council comments and suggestions, uh, starting with Councilmember Eldama. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, want to address the residents of Glendale and especially the residents of the Yocatillo District. Tonight will serve as my last official council meeting as council member for the Yocatillo District. I will vacate my seat on April 1st, 2024 as required by Arizona Revised Statute 38296, as I am a candidate for Glendale Mayor in the 2024 election. It has been the honor of a lifetime to serve the residents of Glendale and as council member and former vice mayor. Together, we have worked tirelessly to improve the city and the Ocotillo community, and I am immensely proud of what we have achieved. As I embark on this new chapter, I carry with me the lessons learned and the memories shared during my tenure in office. While I'm stepping down from my position, my dedication to the betterment of our community and our city remains steadfast, and I am confident the Ocotillo District will continue to thrive and prosper. I extend my heartfelt thanks to the city staff, our public safety, both police and fire, for their collaboration and support over the years, and, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to have worked alongside such dedicated individuals. You have made me a better council member, and I thank you for your support and your expertise. You are dedicated to the citizens of Glendale. And I want to thank the Glendale City Council. It has been a pleasure and an honor and a privilege to serve alongside you, so thank you so much. I appreciate you, and Thank you to all of our business owners, and again, thank you to all of our staff. And I want to thank my family for allowing me to serve for the last 10 years. It's, uh, it's, really, it's a sacrifice, but uh, it's something I've enjoyed, and it's been an absolute honor. Thank you, Mayor. Councilmember Clark. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I've got a Yucca district-wide meeting coming up, and I'll only have two opportunities to push it, so this is one of them. It will be on Wednesday, April 17th at Desert Diamond Arena, which has become my favorite place to meet. And it will be at 6 p.m. I urge all the residents of the Yucca District, well, residents of Glendale, if you want to learn more about Glendale, this is the meeting to attend. Thank you, Mayor. Councilmember Melner is uh, uh, out right at the moment. Councilmember Tomachoff. Uh, thank you, Mayor. i just like to uh, let staff and uh, Choi residents no, save the date, May 2nd, for the, I think the third, maybe the fourth, I don't remember how many years we've been, spring, spring district mixer barbecue that we've been having. So it'll be May 2nd at 5.30 at the Foothills Recreation Aquatic Center. Um, staff and Choya residents save the date. Thank you, Mayor. Councilmember Turner. Uh, thank you, Mayor, not much. Um, but I do want to uh, thank Councilmember Aldama for his service over the last 10 years. It's been a pleasure to work with you. I've learned more about our community from you, and uh, I appreciate that, and wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. A uh, couple things. We have um, the Easter egg hunt for children at Glendale College. Uh, that's coming up this Saturday. Uh, they're gonna have approximately 30,000 plastic eggs. The same group is the ones that put on the Christmas gifts that we distribute right here in downtown Glendale. Uh, bring the kids. It, it starts, I believe, at 11 o'clock, Mayor. Is that correct? I, I think so. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Somebody else read it. Also, uh, Spring Cactus District meeting, Thursday, March 28th, 5 to 7 at Manistee Ranch. Come meet city staff, connect with your neighbors. We also have dinner and beverage catered by Shane's Rib Shack. I look for people coming. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And, and I just I, I want to uh, extend what uh, Vice Mayor was just saying. Uh, the Easter egg hunt is going to be at Glendale Community College at the football field, and they're splitting the field for kids five and under and over five years old, so you don't have to worry about the little ones getting run over by the big ones. Uh, 30,000 eggs. Uh, I, I'm just glad that we didn't have to decorate them. That would have took a couple of days. Uh, with that, uh, thank everyone for being here. We do have some citizens' comments that we're going to allow the citizens uh, 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 bring forth some information that's important to them. 
Uh, these are not on the printed agenda. Uh, but before I welcome the speakers to the podium, I want to remind uh, the audience and everyone uh, that uh, this is a public meeting, and as the chair, I'm not going to tolerate any profanity. So uh, please, uh, no threats uh, to our staff. Uh, if you violate these rules, uh, you'll be asked to leave. So uh, we'll keep it civil and, and uh, try to get some things resolved. I'm going to ask Mr. Wilfong, uh, where are you at? I, there you are. If you'll come up, you, you know how this works, sir. you got three minutes. State your name, the district you live in, and... Um, there you go. Yeah, Warren Wilfong, Arcadillo District. <clears throat> First of all, I want to say thank you uh, to Council Member Adama. He's been a great help all these times he's been in the office. Uh, he's going to be missed, so hopefully we keep seeing him for a while. So uh, I'm here to kind of like talk about this secret meeting that was held that changed code compliance policy. Um, if any of you have read the article, it is a response to what the city manager and this council has done. Uh, it clearly, clearly, uh, the the process did not include any kind of public information or input. So let's talk about policies, okay? So the policy for enforcement within the code department is three inspections. After the third one, if there's no observation of violation, it's closed. If the observation is there, and the violation is there, it gets a citation. I have several cases here. Case 11514, eight inspections, five observations of violations. They're not even following that policy. Case nine, this is the same property, case 92448, nine inspections, six observations of violations. The case was closed. The case was reopened. Case 11509, seven inspections, never performed on the day requested. The case was closed. Case 39976, it's been open for two years. Two years, and it's still open. And the problem is, according to the city manager, is that there's just too many cases of a backlog back there. The code compliance department is not even following their policy. But you hold the res residents responsible for the backlog. Now, residents can't even put in their normal request, and they're limited to where they can go, less than one mile from their house. So if I want to make a complaint about this property right here, it is considered I'm weaponizing the code compliance department because I'm complaining about a neighbor more than a mile away. I'm weaponizing the code compliance department because this is more than a mile away. I pay my taxes. I live in the city of Glendale. This is nothing but BS. Joyce Capson. Joyce Capson, Saguaro District, Granada Estates. You know, I was hoping I didn't have to come back here, but here I am. I am just. The article is funny. Weaponizing the code department. You guys are kidding me, right? And you go into your little clandestine meeting and you change everything that we've worked for for five years to get code straightened out and, and accountable for once. And you guys change it in five minutes. <clears throat> God has sent us another watchdog reporter that I've had the pleasure of talking to. And I think that that person will take the information that Warren Wilfong and I are giving them, along with other residents, and see the corruption sitting here. I know that there is a split council. That's more than obvious. I know who is responsible for this, and he's not sitting in the chair. That's why I came here today to talk to Ray Malnar. Warren Wilfong is blessed to have Jamie Aldama as a council member. I see Jamie standing up for Warren, standing next to him, actually, in that article. 
And I've been, I have been trying to get Ray Malnar to see code running rogue. I have evidence coming out my ears. I pulled 790 public records requests for every property in Granada Estates, and it's in black and white. And Ray refuses to take the time to go over it. Now keep in mind, folks, it took me three months, every spare minute I had, to put those public records requests in to prove to all of you code is running rogue. Three months. It took 115 staff hours to fill those. This is costing the city money and we're still nowhere. I'm gonna say to you like I did on February of 2019 at the first city code review committee meeting. And it's documented in the minutes. Joyce Capson would like to know why the current codes aren't being enforced. Here we are four or five years, five years and one month later, they're still not being enforced. Now I'm asking you people, it's gotta change. I, I want my council member to be like council member Aldama. I do. And I know what the problem is with Tim Bowling. I've been told by four people. Two of them sit on this city council. Two were on the code committee. We're not gonna push Tim Bowling because he's gonna sue the city of Glendale if we fire him. Well, you know what? I'm passing out a little Soda's phone number to people right now because he's already got one lawsuit going. And I'm telling you what, you guys need to look for the citizen, not the staff. And we have given you a, an abundance of evidence. And it goes in one ear and out the other. Oof. Now Tim Bowling's got control again, but the, the worst yeah. thing is the citizens have lost Your time's it. up. Well, my time is up? Your time's up. That's with the red okay. light in front of you. All right, well, I just want to say thank you. Thank and you. I want to say I hope you go into another meeting after this and fix what you've done. Thank you. Rory, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. It's uh, Gurick or Gorick? Right. Okay, sir. If you would, state your name, uh, district you live in, if you know it. Rory Goray, Akatia District, Mr. Thank Mayor, you. Council Members. Thank you, sir. Council Member Aldama, I just want to thank you as a citizen of this district for the great job you have done representing the people of Akatia District. Today I had the privilege to have lunch with several of the members of this district and every one of them are very appreciative of the job you have done. And I just wanna say thank you for a wonderful 10 years. The district is in much better position than it was when you first started. Thank you, sir. Okay. Being there no further business before the council tonight, I'd like to thank everyone uh, for attending tonight. No objection from this council. The meeting is adjourned. You're in charge of this area. <laughs> he didn't tell me he was leaving. I didn't ask if he was coming back. <laughs> Okay, this is my table and I'm in charge? Yeah. Oh, fine.